Hello, everyone. Welcome to part four of the online graduate library research workshop for Geography 700 and 800 students. And this will be discussing how you can manage your information. Now, before I get into the topics of this particular video, I just want to take us back to some of the assumptions that I've already sketched out in the previous videos. And one of those assumptions was that you will have to be dealing with a lot of information. Secondly, you want to do, uh, you want to manage your information as efficiently and effectively as you can. So this video will pull together a lot of the threads that we've already started to talk about. So the first thing I'll look at is how you can save your searches to a database. Secondly, how you can save references to a database. It's a little bit different how you can save references to a reference manager, and then lastly, how you can manage your information with a reference manager. And another thing that I wanted to mention too, I'm hoping that this will also help with one problem that we've all run into, and that's when we're downloading articles from a database, we'll often get the file in an unreadable file name. So we get a PDF, and many of you, probably most of you, prefer to work with PDFs rather than using the full text web version of an article. So if you prefer to work with PDFs, often you'll download a PDF document from a database and it will come with this, often it'll be a numeric file name. And that's really hard to work with because unless you've got a folder structure on your laptop or your home computer that's clearly laid out, you would need to think about what do you want to call this PDF and that can be time consuming. I'll show you a way that you don't have to worry about that. So for our first topic, I'm going to discuss how you can save searches to a database. And I have a few databases open, so let's just, let's move over to them for a brief demo. So I've run an example search in the ProQuest database on parks and wilderness areas and mental health, hoping to get some articles on the impact of mental health in national parks or wilderness areas and so on. So we have 477 results. That's actually quite a lot to go through. There's a few things that can happen as you're running searches in a database like ProQuest. ProQuest actually has a timeout feature whereby if you're not using the database after a certain amount of time, it will actually close the port that's being used and you will lose your search. You will lose any articles that you may have saved in the database by selecting it, say for example here, we're actually saving it up into the folder selected items. If it times out, that's all gone and the search is gone as well. If you've created a complicated search, that can be very frustrating to have that disappear on you. Now let's look over at the right hand drop down menu. We have four different options here as to what we can do with our search. And the first one is we can save our search. We can save our search to my research here you can see. And what that means is that you will have to create an account in ProQuest to do this. And actually for most of these things, to create an alert or to create an RSS feed, you will have to create your own personal account. And with respect to that account, you can use any email address. It doesn't have to be your university email address. The other thing that you could do is you could get a link to these results and you can send it to yourself if you really wanted to. The link is good for a full year, but if you want to keep it longer, you can save it to my research. One thing to note, I have logged in here with my own account. So if we saved it, we can name it. Add a note, we won't bother. All right, now we've saved it in My Research. So let's take a look now under My Research. We see Save Documents, Save Searches, Alerts, so on. So I'll go to the Save Searches field, and here we see there's our first search with our actual search string, which we could go in and modify here, or we could run it here if we wanted. And just to reiterate, saving the search allows you to run a search and not worry about the database timing out and you losing a really complex search. And also it allows you to run a search, save it, and maybe go back another day and rerun the search or modify it or do whatever. Now we're in the GeoBase database and I've run this, the same search. We can do the same thing. We can save the search, give it a search name. I won't bother doing that and hit save. And that is then saved into a saved search area. 
And once you're logged in, if you click on your name, you can see where it's kept your saved searches. And there are some of mine. Now in Web of Science, and this is something that unfortunately happens with databases. The last time I did this demo last year, there was the capacity to save your searches. But now if I go in, what I've discovered is that that is not the case anymore. We can do a couple of things with our results. We can create an alert, and I won't do that, but what, what happens is anytime a new article is added, a new record is added in Web of Science, it will alert you via email, and you can set that up to do daily, weekly, monthly. Uh, I, I think you can actually change the time that those alerts appear but you cannot actually save your, your actual search. Now, if I click history, this shows us what we can do. These are the searches that I've just run. We can copy a link to a particular search query and send that to ourselves. You can edit the search. You can create an alert, which we've just seen, or you can remove, you can remove a particular search, but you cannot actually save the search into the Web of Science database. So unfortunately, that's not an option for us anymore.